Over the past year, I've welcomed comments about what you've wanted to see, your overall thoughts on the music I've covered, and I've seen a lot of hate mail too. And just because I haven't been able to reply to everything, doesn't mean I haven't been paying attention. So, this video is dedicated to everyone who left a comment on one of my videos in the past year. These are my favorite viewer comments of 2015. The following comments were taken from all the sites I post on throughout the year, but a majority of them will come from YouTube because, well, YouTube just brings out the best in its commenters. That being said, I am going to black out usernames for each comment because I don't want people getting attacked online and to keep their own privacy. Everything else you see, however, is a screenshot of the actual comment left on a video. I'll have the title card of each video behind it so you know which one they're talking about. I'm sure you'll figure out the rest as we go on, so let's start things off with a private message sent to me on YouTube from one of my fans. You're a f bag. Your bashing of St. Anger, Creed, and Limp Biscuit proved that you just go with what the popular opinions are, not giving a true, honest opinion! I like St. Anger, and I was a teenager when Creed and Limp Biscuit were around. With Creed, I own my own prison, greatest hits, and full circle! I only own one Limp Biscuit album, and its results may vary, but I've heard all the songs from Chocolate Starfish! I am sick and tired of like you shitting on these things. You need to have your kicked. I bet Metallica, Creed, and Limp Bizkit could kick your Well, yeah. That's like 13 people. Of course they could destroy me. <laughs> also, what's your argument? You listen to the albums? Did you like them? Do you like those other bands? Pretty sure everything I said was my honest opinion. There's a reason why I did those videos. Those albums are terrible. But rest assured, 13 men could easily destroy me. But not Fred Durst. I see him standing in the corner while the other 12 men just kick the crap out of me. And then after they leave and I'm a bloody broken mess on the ground, he just comes in and like kind of kicks me with his toe just a little and runs away giggling like he accomplished something and he contributed to the group. There's a metaphor for his music contributions in that whole situation also. Hagrid leads a damn good rock band. <laughs> I would say something funny about Claudio's hair, but uh, I have the crazy person hair too, so I can't talk much. Epic rap battles of history, Gorillas vs. Death Clock. That would be intense. I would love to see that on Adult Swift. Oh. Please allow me to adjust my pants so that I may dance the good time dance and put the onlookers and innocent bystanders in a trance. Man, Clutch kicks so much <laughs> I want more sonnets and haikus about people's favorite bands in the comments. Those are fantastic. If FFDP was a beer, they'd be Keystone Light. Okay, I don't drink, but based on that, I imagine Keystone Light is being really watered down and having the right ingredients, but just not mixed in together properly, or in the right doses. Just like Five Finger Death Punch's last album. This is how I feel about Five Finger Death Punch. They definitely are the McDonald's of the metal scene. Sure, it can fill you up with what you crave from time to time, but there is no nutritional value whatsoever. But McDonald's has salads now! Let's be honest, no one goes to McDonald's for salads. This band is so f***ing awful, it's not even funny. A five is way too generous. I-K-R. Well, f*** you guys, proceeds to flip you off. <laughs> I want to see this guy on a debate team in high school. His rebuttal, well, screw all of you! <laughs> this was a review. It discussed the new album. There was pictures and videos, also some songs. Ten out of ten. Wow, very literal. That was a comment. It had sentences. 7 out of 10? My mom was into Will Smith and Rob Zombie stuff, so my mom is better than most of yours. Oh yeah? Well, my mom was into Barbara Streisand. Dang it! I didn't know Lady Gaga did heavy metal. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of angry people in Maria Brink's Wonderland and in the Blood Laser that are gonna be pissed after they hear that. 
A Thousand Suns, the best album that Radiohead ever put out. Uh, oh, it's kind of true though. I mean, come on. If you play that out to a Radiohead fan, they probably are going to think it's one of their own. I really like these videos. I guess I enjoy people suffering through shit. Awesome. Uh, Creed is actually a pretty good band. You must be so proud of yourself. Well, I do like to think I put some effort into my videos, and I'm trying to improve things, so I guess, yeah, I kind of am proud of my- <laughs> Oh man, it's still funny to me. Ignorant pus. Ignorant? No, I knew exactly what I was talking about, as someone who followed Creed from my own prison. And also, can you at least put some grammar and capitalization if you're gonna insult me? Just put sex into some of the best lyrics ever. <laughs> okay, here we go. Gripping your pillow tight, exit sex. <laughs> I cry when angels deserve to sex. <laughs> Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early sex? <laughs> Francis Scott Key was a pervert! Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? <laughs> wow, did not see that episode of Spongebob. <laughs> Look at this photograph. Every time I do it makes sex. <laughs> no. It can't even make photograph entertaining if you change that lyric out. So, this is the Michael Bay of music? Nah, Nickelback isn't racist enough. And there's not as many explosions. Yet. Also, fun fact, Chad Kroger co-wrote Hello Kitty. That's not fun at all! That song sucked! So, Nickelback calls 9-11. Okay, I knew there were going to be some bad comments about the 9-11 stuff for Nickelback's album when it came out that day, but... I didn't want to say anything. So I left it to you guys. Sad that 9-11 was the second most devastating tragedy that day. Oh, uh, no. Silver Side Up came out on 9-11. Illuminati confirmed. <laughs> yes, that's what confirmed it. Chad Kroger can't melt steel beams. <laughs> no, he'll just buy someone to melt it for him because he's a millionaire now. Ugh. Speaking of more Nickelback, though, let's keep it going! I will openly admit to being a former Nickelback fan. Their early stuff was pretty damn good. Alright, let's fast forward this a little bit. This review is the Fox News of critique. I can't be bothered to figure out the host's name, but this is not an honest review. It's bagging on a subject for the sake of appeasing a fan base. Our host here is taking the Sean Hannity approach to covering this album and acting like it's the worst possible, most nation-threatening thing. Wow! I never thought I'd be compared to Sean Hannity. Rocked is apparently the Fox News of the music world. Again, though, I don't think I'm racist enough for that. I don't think I lie enough, either. I don't think you realize that people buy albums because they enjoy them. What? That's why? Oh, oh my gosh, no! Oh, my life is a lie! ATRR Best Album. This channel is quite S star star star. Maybe worse. Uh... Rocked Happy Fun Time. This channel good? Maybe yes? If you don't stop taking jabs at Nickelback, I will unsubscribe! Holy crap! Nickelback fans are a lot angrier than I thought they'd be. Chad Kroger is a communist. Alright. <laughs> Again, he's not a terrorist for the 9-11 stuff because he had nothing to do with it. Pretty sure he's not a communist too. <laughs> I actually hope a great book writer takes all the Nickelback songs and write a murder mystery of the Denny's Killer. Ugh, I don't. They'd give Fifty Shades of Grey a run for its money. Ugh. All that disgusting bondage sex and stalking over a four-course Denny's Grand Slam? Ew. I couldn't even fathom what you were talking about when you said that Silver Side Up wasn't the worst Nickelback album you ever heard. Now I understand. Oh god, I understand. I wish you guys would take me seriously the first time when I say something without me having to prove it to you. Well, I'm so glad to listen to Austin's rock radio station, KLBJ. I remember someone called them and asked them to play any Nickelback, and they said, Your taste in music sucks. 
I really love FM radio DJs. As time's gone on, they've gotten more and more desperate and more and more bitter to say whatever they want. It's awesome. Photograph was so overplayed, I think I came close to shoving an ice pick in my ear so I could be rendered legally deaf. <laughs> I really hope someone doesn't let you in a kitchen anymore whenever music's playing. Oh man, I feel your pain, bro. My mom used to blast this damn album in the car non-stop when I was in middle school. It just drove me nuts. God, I feel like I'm back there in my mom's beat-up van, waiting for my sister listening to my eardrums being raped. Huh. Guess my mom's not as bad for listening to Barbra Streisand. Hi, Mom. Nah, Scooby-Doo is AIDS. I missed that episode of Scooby-Doo. What's with cartoons these days? Yup. Nothing says balls like a song called God Must Hate Me. No pads, no helmets, no understanding of irony. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Back in the day, with that title being all extreme and tough, and the biggest complaints about life or waking up in the morning kind of sends a mixed signal. But then again, knowing the band, they probably spent most of their time just thinking of that title and the rest of the 40 minutes just writing the actual songs. Amazing how punk went from standing up against the man to standing up against your school teacher. <laughs> yeah, you know, I wish we had a time machine where we could go back and send the music of that era from like the pop punk days in the 2000s, all the bad stuff, and just play it for all the 80s punk bands who really stood up for something and show what their music evolves to. <laughs> Did anything happen in Canada between Rush and Nickelback? Celine. Dion. Ew, there's a lot of shots of Canada in my comments. Canada's actually great. They've put a lot of music out. <laughs> but yeah, Celine Dion and Nickelback come from there too, so I can't say too much. <laughs> of course you could be a WWE headliner. Anyone can do it, even a glass of milk. Glass of milk. Glass of milk. Glass of milk. Seriously, if you guys aren't watching the Mark Remark by Little Karibo, you're really missing out as a wrestling fan. I believe that the ghost of Kurt Cobain's ghost may have tried to kill him, stealing his voice. Oh! Oh! Ah. <laughs> Somebody, please, kill Fred Durst! The puddle of mud comments got real violent. <laughs> milk, milk, lemonade. Around the corner, puddle of mud is made. Ew. Ew. <laughs> I like this album because it's so bad. It's like a Troll 2 or The Room of music. Yeah, but at least with Troll 2, I think they were really trying to make things so stupid that you remember them for good reasons because they're funny. I think the only good thing about Wes Scantlin is he's still alive. Good for him. I think I figured out the problem. Wes is a banana that has gained sentience and hides among humans. Check that picture out of him with his shirt lifted like he's a drunk college chick. He appears to be rotting about his left pectoral. He gets f***ed up to draw attention away from his body and towards his actions. We figured out your game, you banana man. We will stop the invasion. I am never eating a banana again. <laughs> Please review a Buck Cherry album. Then again, asking someone to review a Buck Cherry album is like asking somebody to pour acid in their ears. It's painful, unbearable, and an unpleasant experience. Okay, some of you are just sadists for making me look up some of that stuff and see if I would review it. I'm regretting the past. I get the point of the series and I like doing it, but... Ah, there's only so much I can do. <laughs> you must like f***y music. Saint Anger rocks. Yes. That clearly must be it. You really did Metallica proud with that comment. <laughs> I regret that I even clicked this vid. You're a f idiot. <laughs> Again, could you at least capitalize and use proper spelling if you're gonna insult me? Come on! <laughs> you ungrateful m Saint Anger is just different, not pure Come on, and have some respect! In my honest opinion, I love this album. Great, you love the album! I don't! Still love Metallica. You can love a band but not love everything they do just because they're Metallica. You're ugly and f*** you. Smiley. <laughs> I've been called worse by meaner emoticons. Who's the drummer? Mr. Tumble. I had to look up who Mr. Tumble is, and... 
I kind of like the idea of Lars dressing up as Mr. Tumble. That's kind of awesome, actually. Lars Ulrich is a troll, a gnome, a brain damaged midget that can eat the biggest bag of Ah. Uh, next comment. It all and no regrets. This. Basically, what they were saying during the recording of this album, literally. <laughs> Still better than going kill, 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 kill over and over again at the end of the album. Unless they were saying that stuff too during recording. In which case, it got a lot darker than I thought it would. Dot, 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 dot. I kind of like the Saint Anger album. One thing I've learned from doing a Regretting the Past on Saint Anger either you like Saint Anger or you don't, but either way, you're wrong. That guy actually makes me ashamed to live in Florida. Yeesh, he's bad. <laughs> I love the fact that all the crazy stuff that Florida has on an hourly basis, it's Fred Durst that makes people ashamed. <laughs> I am ashamed to see Fred Durst wearing my city's jersey. Yeah, I know exactly how that feels. Kid Rock did the same thing to me with a St. Louis Blues jersey. Has my team suffered enough? I never knew that Limp Biscuit actually had some talent behind that screaming little girl. Okay, I actually do think if it was a little girl in front of all those musicians in Limp Biscuit like Wes Borland, it could have been okay. I mean, Baby Metal's amazing right now with Dragon Force behind him. But then again, Fred Durst, little girl, I don't think I would want to hear that little girl swearing that much. Can you imagine little Susie down the street singing hot dog? Ugh. Biscuit rule. Off. <laughs> I don't know what biscuit rule is, but I imagine it's the one rule that you have to make everything behind you sound worse, no matter how good they are. <laughs> Meh, I like their sound. They're still popular, and they have humor. Music elitists need to die. What humor do they have? Singing hot dog? Naming their album after an anus? Ew! <laughs> This album is all about hooks, with a few gems like The One and Boiler. You Bradley Cooper wannabe looking m****. Just a second. I'm surprisingly okay with being insulted that way. You're retarded, man. I don't own one? Fred stings amazing when he wants to look at Lean on me or his Metallica cover Nirvana cover. Your definition of amazing and the effort put in is extremely low. <laughs> he does Nirvana better than Nirvana. Look at those men. He sings better than Kurt on this cover. Wow. I guess the Sane Asylums allow their patients to have YouTube accounts now. Plus, they're the best live band I've ever seen. I really hope you die, you effing piece of <laughs> And with that death wish, those were my favorite comments of 2015. There's much more coming, and at the end of the year, I'm going to talk about my favorite albums of the year. Thanks again for watching and all the comments. I have to go get ready and keep that insanity coming. <laughs> hey guys, thank you for watching. This is something I'm just going to try new every year. If you don't like it, just leave a comment saying you didn't really care for it. If you did like it, please leave a comment and say something else. Keep these comments coming. I like reading them. Also, please check out my Patreon. It really does help me out a ton. I'm trying to save up for a new computer so I can get these episodes out faster. And also, as always, please subscribe and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Rocked Reviews.